So Canon came out with their new range of mirrorless cameras and I happened to get my hands on on M10. That is their lowest range camera in this segment. So mirrorless cameras are supposed to be as capable as DSLRs, but they are a lot more compact and you can also change the lens if you would like to. So let's start with the basics. You can get it in black or white color, which is a nice addition to the usual all black camera scene. The lenses are removable, but they are not the same size as your usual Canon lens. So you will need an adapter. You can get an adapter if you would really like to use this heavy lens, but then be really careful because it's really forward heavy and it you can drop it really quickly. <laughs> you can use an adapter or a mount and then you can mount the big one onto the small one and have a really weird camera. This is probably use, more useful with M3 or M5 cameras because they're really a bit more uh, advanced and this one is just almost like a small point and shoot. I saw it as a camera that a potential vlogger could really benefit from and that was probably made for vloggers, especially because of the flip screen and it uses really simple navigation. So for example, you have three shooting modes a bit of buttons and that's about it what this camera provides built-in flash that's really cute not really useful but really cute <laughs> hdmi usb ports it has the wi-fi function that pretty much all canon cameras now have and which i really really love because when i take photos with my cameras and then i want to put them on instagram it's really easy to do that and i love them for that this is supposed to be like a really vlogger kind of camera and i thought okay all my years i have used the g7x as my vlogging camera which means that this is a two-year-old camera it's mark one it's the first version and how do these two compare for example this was almost twice the price of m10 that it is right now in slovenia prices for m10 are around 350 euros so this was twice the price um, but it's two years old and this has twice the sensor size of the g7x and i put it to the test and let's see how they compare Okay, the first thing I noticed really, really quickly was that while you only press a button on G7X to have the camera fully extended and ready to shoot, you have to A. Remove the cover B. Set the lens in shooting position C. Turn on the camera It's quite a process and if I want to shoot something really quick on the go, this is quite a process and I will lose this almost certainly. So when you start shooting, and especially if you are walking, there is one thing you will notice pretty instantaneously. Even though both cameras have image stabilization, you will see that G7X does a much, much, much better job with stabilizing your image than the M10. It's so unbelievably different that I thought that I had some sort of stabilization turned off and I went back to settings and I tried it again and I did a couple of different shots, but still the image stabilization on G7X was way better. When it comes to taking pictures, they're both pretty much the same. Here you can really see a bigger sensor come to life and how it can capture a lot more detail than the smaller sensor of G7X. You can also see that in video a lot. Also, low light video is pretty similar or I could say that it was a bit better on M10, but nothing too extraordinary because the G7X is already mind blowing when it comes to low light video. <laughs> What? Well, this is just getting weirder and weirder. One thing I did notice and was really, really frustrated with was the autofocus. Sometimes it just didn't want to find me to go where I wanted it to go, even if I tapped the autofocus, it took some time to get to the point that where I wanted it to be. 
and I was so confused by that that I actually asked some people around if that is something that I only experienced and if there's a problem with my particular model or if it's something that is M10 wide. And from my research, as I saw it, yes, M10 is inclined to have a slower focus, even though it has a lot more focus points and it's supposed to be superior to that. And you have to know that also the G7X models were really, really known to have bad autofocus over time. Like the autofocus over time just gets all over the place. Sometimes it just needs like four, five, ten seconds seconds to, to find where your face is really sharp. In that regard, a point-and-shoot camera that was always perceived as wonderful but lacks in stability when it comes to autofocus, to have a camera that is now wonderful but also lacks even more in autofocus, that's a bit inconvenient for a professional vlogger. If you really want to use M10, uh, more on manual settings and things like that, you will find out that you cannot access all the manual settings. For example, uh, ISO is fixed to certain values and so on and so forth. You can't really do much with it. Also, if you're thinking of having the advantage of buy other lenses and have many lenses on a point and shoot, I would maybe consider buying a DSLR still because the lenses for this series, for the M series, can be as much as the camera itself or even more. For example, this zoom lens has a retail price of 400 euros, which means that only the lens costs you more than camera plus the kit lens. If size is not an issue with you choosing your perfect camera, and you want to change lenses, just go for a DSLR, not for this small line, because these guys are so expensive. And you also don't have many companies that are not Canon that also produce these kind of lenses, the M series lenses. So think about that. Of course, you can always get an adapter, but you'll just get more bulk and more of everything. I wouldn't really recommend that. So if you ask me, would I exchange my two-year-old G7X for a brand new M10 for what I need, which is vlogging and immediate action taking? I would not. I would still stay with my trusty G7X, which has served me for so long and I love it so much. Um, that I would just stick with this one. On the other hand, for whom this might be really useful, maybe for somebody who is only getting into photography and wants to also learn how to work with manual values, maybe have the option of exchanging lenses, even if you're more inclined to photography, not so much on video, because I really did this test from a point of view from somebody who does more video than photography. I almost rarely take photos. The photos I take are usually with my phone, so I can't really talk in that department. But as far as the video goes, I would not recommend this for a young video maker. It is still good, you can make awesome stuff with it, but I think it's more on the photography side. And also, if you are buying this camera and you are thinking of getting other lenses, I would just suggest you to buy the mount and and have the normal size lenses fixed on instead of these ones which are really expensive. <laughs> this was my opinion. Let me know if I forgot something. Let me know if uh, maybe you had any experience with this camera and you found something else that I didn't mention. I always love hearing those because it just, it opens the horizons of my knowledge. So please let me know in the comments if you have any more comments, uh, ideas, anything regarding the Canon M10. And I'll see you soon. Bye!